7.30, 92.1 WROI, 67 degrees outside the window on 8th Street. Again, as you listen to us on 92.1 WROI, WROIFM.com. Streaming audio live, RTC Channel 5, audio and video live. Right, Scott, on RTC Channel 4. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Hey, Scott's back in the studio today. Has his own coffee cup. He's all set, ready to go. <laughs> and, of course, if you have a smartphone or an Android device, you can download the TuneIn Radio app or an app similar to that because there are a lot of those out there. Take us wherever you happen to be going, and I know since it's Friday, Getting ready for the weekend will mean a trip to First Federal Savings Bank, where you'll see Evan Gottschalk. Evan, good morning. Hey, good morning, Tom. What an awesome morning. I tell you, a nice day going on. Yeah, a little haze out there. You know, it's driving there. in. Yeah. Corn is as high. Hey, it is. <laughs> you can't see anywhere anymore because all the right. corn surrounding the town. It's up. That's right. Oh, I came in. I saw Shane Lehman walking to work. Yeah, he likes that. Any wagon neck driving by on his dirt bike. There you go. <laughs> Got everybody going to work today. That's right. Beautiful day for going to work. It's awesome to be in a community where everyone's working hard and you bet. caring about each other. And by the way, I wanted to congratulate you and your wife on being part of the Times Theater project. Oh, thanks a lot. I appreciate that very much. We're excited about that. Times Theater uh, is an important uh, venue in my oh, life. Absolutely. Growing up here everybody, Manchester. sure. So we've, we've seen a lot of great uh, local support for doing something with the theater in a meaningful way and it's kind of neat because sometimes a project like that can really be a catalyst for a community because sure of the broad-based support. Especially so, in our downtown area, that's uh, that's a good thing. That's absolutely right. So I'll talk a little bit more about that in just a minute. Okay. Um, but a lot of neat things going on there and that, again, some good partnerships uh, getting together on that, which is great to see. Well, um, our studio guest this morning we'll be speaking with uh, in a little bit is uh, Stacy Hart from the Fulton County Solid Waste District. Well, she's excited to be here, too. You can just tell by that big smile on her face. I am, I am. Good morning. <laughs> good, good. Nice to have you with us. Well, thank you. <laughs> I think we're going to have a uh, recycling-themed show this morning. <laughs> good. In honor of good. Stacey. But great to have you, Stacy. Thanks. Um, yes, so Fedco. Tom is now the owner of the Time Cedar right now. Okay. Um, in downtown Rochester. Uh, I grew up going to the, the movies there. And that, that was the only theater I knew for quite a while in my life. <laughs> Saw some of the old Disney classics there when I was a kid. But, uh, you know, I really appreciate Dr. Hoff gifting the theater to Fedco. Um, Fedco is partnering with the Times Theater Incorporated, which is a not, new nonprofit that we've formed. Um, some great local leadership there, and they're working on tax exempt status right now. We had uh, Tim Wagner on the air not too long ago, and I think he's the president of that uh, particular entity. So if you need contact, of course, they can contact you, they can contact Tim, and, and uh, people that are interested to help out. That's right. We're always looking uh, for volunteers down the road. We're collecting uh, contact information for that right now. And uh, with Fedco being the building owner, you can also participate uh, if you want to by donating some money. So we're accepting tax exempt donations Fedco's actually accepting that through Fedco, sure. Uh, on on behalf of the theater, so you can you can write Times Theater in the memo line if that's something that moves your heart. And uh, the funds right now will be going for maintenance um, as we seek uh, tax exempt status, and uh, then we'll go to uh, rehabilitation restoration. Exciting project. It is. And the vision is a uh, some live performance theater, uh, which I think it used to have years and years ago, but also. Um, still being able to show, um, uh, operate as a cinema and show movies as well. So, uh, really great vision and um, going to be a, you know, a, a big project for our community. But I think something that um, a lot of local residents have expressed support. They have very much so. So, uh, also another a couple other exciting developments really is a. Uh, uh, I understand a beautiful wall's going to be going Ninth up. Main Ninth Street, Main Street, that's right. Start the bricklaying on Monday. Yes, it'll be great. A brick wall, I think, yeah. will look excellent, and I appreciate everybody that's been involved getting that going. Well, there's a lot, a lot going on in the next couple of weeks because we're also getting ready for the Summer Olympics that don't come around right. too often, the 31st Olympiad. And, uh, you know, this is kind of a rumor. I don't get into rumors too much on here, but uh, I think the Australian... Um, Olympic team was told when you're swimming keep your mouth closed. Really? Yeah, I saw a headline from an Australian paper that said uh, keep your mouth closed. So Ooh. Interesting Ooh. 
uh, site. They've had some issues, but I think they're getting things around it. It should, of course, be a, a beautiful games down there in Brazil, and and uh, it's fun to get the teams together. My kids are excited about it. Okay, good. Okay, uh, local events. Uh, the Fulton County Public Library is having a patron appreciation event today at the main branch, and uh, we're all welcome to go. Okay. They're going to be having refreshments. It's from two to four, and they want to show appreciation for for all of us citizens that go and participate and make those programs uh, fun and work. So thanks to the public library. Make sure to show up today. And the Rochester Police Department's hosting its second annual Police in the Park event this Saturday, tomorrow, Rochester City Park. Uh, it's at 7 o'clock at the large City Park Pavilion there up on the hill. And uh, you can go get hot dogs, popcorn, cotton candy. They'll have drinks, uh, courtesy of Mill Creek Missionary Church, who they're partnering with. And uh, there's also going to be a photo booth this year. Excellent. So you can get some memories. And the, they're going to be doing a police dog demonstration at about 8 o'clock. And then uh, showing Zootopia, which is a Disney film. It's going to be at dusk. We've got to wait till it gets a little dark. And that's on the men's softball field um, tomorrow. Okay. So all expenses nice associated with the movie are provided by the Rochester Police Department. That's another appreciation event. Really, really nice event last year. Bet. That's a great of them to do. And uh, the Rochester girls soccer team are raising some funds. There's going to be a car wash at Napa, uh, 1501 Main Street. And that's tomorrow also from 11 to 4. And that's a kind of a donation type car wash. So uh, whatever you feel uh, led to give there is good enough. And that's for the Rochester Girls soccer team. Habitat for Humanity is hosting a house dedication and open house tomorrow at 6. And that's for the family of uh, Tony and Nuria Boyd. And we're all invited again and to welcome Tony and Nuria to their new home. Habitat's what, 13th, 14th, somewhere in there? Yeah, I, th I was thinking they 14th. Have, yeah, I believe that's about right. So congratulations to them. They do a lot of good for our community. You, they get one up and you think, oh, that's great. And then build another one. Not before long you hear right. about the next one. It's it's really amazing uh, work that they do. And a lot of people involved in that those projects as well. Uh, the new home's at 4394 North, 100 West. Okay. And so that's where to show up tomorrow at 6. Well, there will be hot dogs and, and even some ice cream Okay, for a nice summer treat. Fulton County Council on Aging is taking a trip to the Indiana State Fair. And that day is going to be August 16th. Any seniors welcome to join the trip. It's $2 for the bus and $2 admission to the state fairgrounds. Uh, there's going to be free tram rides all day. And each food trailer is going to have a $2 item to purchase, so there's some reasonable uh, cost items there too. Uh, the group's going to depart from the Community Resource Center at 8 a.m. on the 16th and then they get in, back in town around 5 p.m. So a full day trip, transportation. Uh, you can sign up to do that. Why don't you call the center at 223-6953. Sounds to me like we should take a $10 bill to First Federal and get five $2 bills. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. You know, Jay Heidi's always got some $2 bills if you okay. find them today. <laughs> that'll, that'll pay your trip. Uh, Fulton County Human Resource Association, uh, which is a, a nice collection of local HR um, uh, people. And That's an important meeting, by the way. Very important. Uh, they do a lot of, of great uh, interaction and collaboration um, on, uh, and, you know, you work somewhere and you realize how important human resources oh, absolutely. really are. They're kind of your advocate. They're sponsoring uh, an I-9 requirements seminar, um, and that's August 12th at 8 a.m. at the Rochester Learning Center. Uh, they're having Dave Basham speak, and he's the Senior Outreach Analyst for the U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services. So uh, an expert's going to be there, um, Mr. Basham, to provide that seminar. So employers, HR managers, um, encouraged to attend that event. Going to be some great information that's very useful and relevant for you. Um, if you want to register, contact Bob Hoffman. And we've got an email address that's prosafetyllc at fourway.net. Uh, you can also contact Deb Lamaster at Woodlawn Hospital, and that's D Lamaster, L E M A S T E R, at woodlawnhospital.com. Okay. And that'll, that'll allow you to uh, get signed up for that seminar. 
Um, Akron Arts League is having their Music on the Square okay. tonight, this evening in downtown Akron, 6.30 to 8.30, and uh, got a very invigorating sounding band going to be there tonight, the Swamp Water Stompers. So uh, great music, <laughs> they play Dixieland music, and I, I'm getting a visual there too. I don't know if there's, a, <laughs> if there's any, uh, any movement or, or stage presence, but I'm kind of imagining there will be. But Dixieland Music tonight in Akron, 6.30 to 8.30. you got to bring your own seating, but it'll be a great event. Well, it's that time of year again. Applications are uh, being accepted for people interested in being part of the 16 and 17 Fulton County Leadership Academy. Ah, excellent. I know you participated in, in part of that, Tom, with the radio station, uh, which is great. You know, this uh, program is a nine-month, 18-session program. Uh, it introduces uh, participants to leadership principles. There's some classroom settings and, and guest speakers like yourself. And then it also centers on activities and businesses in Fulton County. Um, great way to get um, kind of some broad knowledge on what's going on in Fulton County. And I was a member, I think, of the 2009 class and uh, boy, I've lived here my whole life and I learned right. a lot of things. Got to take some, some interesting tours of local businesses and uh, met a lot of great people as well. Just as importantly, Evan, a lot of good ideas have come out of the Fulton County Leadership Academy that are still in effect today. That's a really good point. Um, kind of creates an environment of, right. of brainstorming and, and how to make our community better. There is a project component to that. Uh, that's, a, that's a great point. So uh, if that sounds like something that uh, would be interesting to you, um, there's always ways to make it possible for you to be a participant. Um, you should contact Mark Kepler at the Purdue Cooperative Extension Office at the Fulton County Fairgrounds. And his phone number is 223-3397. His email is mkepler at purdue.edu. Okay. Uh, workshop is, is happening next month. <clears throat> and that's something we've been uh, lucky to be a part of with our community. We were chosen for this. It's an active living workshop. And uh, it's uh, going to help us promote our community as a healthy and active community for all ages. And that's from 9 to 4, August 18th. you got to register for this one. But if you're interested in, in being healthy or civic-minded civic individual and you want to be involved, this is something you can get involved with. So. In May, Rochester was selected uh, among uh, seven other cities to host this. Um, so it's a, a day-long workshop, like I said, from 9 to 4, um, kind of designed for the government, staff, uh, community leaders, civic leaders, uh, people interested in, in health promotion. Um, lunch is provided. So uh, what you need to do to, to find out more information or to get yourself registered is contact Betsy Hines who's the Purdue Extension Community Wellness Coordinator. Okay. And her phone number is also 223-3397. Her email is heinz21 at purdue.edu. Uh, the new paintings in the gallery at the Fulton County Public Library are actually winning works from the Akron Area Arts League 4th of July Art Show. So you can go see the winners at the library. They'll be on display all throughout August. So go check that out. Um, Tidewater Tax Service is the pickup point for free backpacks with school supplies, and that's coordinated by the Fulton County Pack a Backpack. So you can claim a backpack uh, by calling 223-4052. There's still backpacks left, so I encourage that as school is approaching next week. Right. Uh, great program. Uh, they distribute hundreds of backpacks every year. And uh, we've got a big milestone this week. Today, you can go to RTC's parking lot. They're celebrating their 120th wow. anniversary. Wow, terrific. Um, that's incredible, and uh, they're having their customer appreciation day today, so feel free to head over there. Uh, they'd love to see you and help celebrate that. We've got some, some more flowers today for Charles and Annette Young's Fruit and Vegetable Garden on 1097 West 7th Street, and they were chosen as a top garden for July by the Rochester Garden Club. Congratulations to them. You bet. Hey, at First Federal, our new ATM is always open. We got one here in Rochester, and we have one in, in Winnemac as got well. Got money inside of it and everything, right? It is loaded. <laughs> Ready for the weekend. Uh, we had a great time serving Winnemac customers last week I'll at bet. our Customer Appreciation Day. We had over 130 customers, Tom, that uh, deposited Excellent. a free check into the ATM. So we had a great time 
um, helping everybody learn how to do that. And uh, I was helping a nice uh, young lady, and she ended up pulling the fifty dollars check really? out of the box. Wow. So she was excited. I'll she bet. was excited. I don't think I deserved any credit, but that was <laughs> that was fun to be a part of. I can tell you. So if you have any questions about online banking, our mobile app, bill pay, pop money, or new ATM or debit cards, uh, stop in and see Cindy or Alice in our electronic banking department in Rochester. You can call them, 223-2128. We're here to help you. Um, our debit card customers have received their new MasterCard debit cards in the mail now, and uh, I would just encourage everybody that uh, has their new MasterCard Go ahead and call and get it activated. Tomorrow, by tomorrow. We need you to get it activated. <laughs> so you can use it. We want you right. to use it. Um, so easy process, but you gotta do it. You get to set up your PIN number just the way you want it um, when you go through that process. All prompted through the telephone. Um, very simple. But please do remember to do that because the old Visa cards are gonna be turned off um, early next week. So we'll, we'll give a couple extra days here, but uh, we do need that to happen. And remember, if you've got the number stored anywhere or you've given it out for an automatic payment, you need to uh, call and update that or go on the website and update that um, so that uh, the next time it calls for your payment, it'll use your new MasterCard number. First Federal is FDIC insured and an equal housing lender, and our NMLS number is 399927. That's it. Okay, well, we're pleased to have a our esteemed representative from the Fulton County Solid Waste <laughs> District, Stacy Hart. Good morning, Stacy. Good morning. Thank you for coming on to uh, help educate us about what's going on at the Solid Waste District. Um, give us a, I think we're going to be talking recycling. I have a, a hunch this morning. It might be the name of our game here. So give us a, a sense of the Solid Waste District and the mission of what you guys do over there. Well, um, we are just trying to uh, get more people to recycle. and um, It's a worthy cause. Yeah, yeah. Um, a lot of we do have a lot of businesses and residents of Fulton County that do recycle so we appreciate that a lot and um, encourage more people to recycle is that really kind of a lot of what you spend your time doing um, communicating and thinking about promoting more recycling in the community um, I wouldn't say I mean we're, we're we're busy I mean we have a lot of a lot of recycling. I mean, we we're trying to educate people every day. Um, there's a lot of people that um, don't understand what we do or how we operate. So um, we do spend a lot of time trying to educate. Why don't you let us know where you're located? Because I've had that question before. If I needed to, um, and I, I know there's several community options. So why don't you share those with us too? But I've had the question of where is the recycling center, or where can I drop something off? Um, the recycling center is located at 1452 Wenzel Street. Okay. Um, we do have eight drop-off locations throughout the county, though. Um, we do have a trailer down at Smith Farm Store. We have one in Akron, um, Talma, Leitersford, Kiwana, um, and one at Caston School Corporation. Well, that hits about every community in the county. Right, right. That's great. So what kind of things can you drop off at those locations? Because I've seen the one at Smith Farm Store. It looks like a, a trailer that I could go to any time of the day. Right. Um, you can drop off most most items that we take can be dropped off at the trailers. Um, and every bin is marked. It has like cardboard, paper, glass, plastic, steel, aluminum. Um, and then we encourage people to put the items in the correct mm. bins. <laughs> that helps us. <laughs> yeah. We have a lot of people that either don't pay attention or just you know so, but we do encourage people and they're clearly marked so and out front of our building we also have drop-off bins for after hours if we're closed how's the market for recyclables right now Stacy um actually it's some of the stuff has come up okay so we're I know it's down our, for a while so yeah. it's good to see it coming back yeah. a little bit our, our paper and cardboard is coming back up okay. so hopefully hopefully it stays up give us an idea of some of the funding sources that you have because that's obviously one of them um, our main our main funding comes from our host fee from the landfill okay um, and over the years that fee has been declining so um, is, that a, is that a result of less waste going into the landfill yes. or a change in the it's less waste going okay. into our landfill Interesting. Um, 
for a long time we were getting waste out of Chicago. Right. And they were driving all this way, and I think they stopped, pretty well, they, much cut that back, right? Well, I was told that there was a big landfill um, opened up by Lake uh, County. Okay. Um, so Between most of that was diverted that, into yeah, that. Yeah, a quicker trip, right, sure. Right, right. We're speaking with Stacy Hart from the Fulton County Solid Waste District this morning. And uh, as our community over the last over the years, as our our recycling volume increased or decreased, or how how are we doing um, as a community? I would say it, it has increased some, but there's a there's a big area for improvement. Um, still, fifty to sixty percent of the material that goes to our landfill is recyclable material. So wow. we're still that's a, that's a big number. Yep, it really is. Yep. I wonder what. Uh, why that is or what what we could do about that well <laughs> um, uh, we need more participation in recycling um, we, we've implemented a new plan and that will that will that would uh, differentiate between trash and recycling right right your new plan yep okay yep. tell us a little bit about that what's yeah. it called and how, how can we participate okay um, we call it our pay as you throw program and what it is is we are selling trash bags they're actual for garbage um, not your recycling uh, people need to understand that, that you still have to keep your recycling separate from the trash and what it is it's it's designed to help incentivize recycling so the more you recycle the less trash you have um, that way when you buy the bag for three dollars a bag the, the less you put in that bag um, obviously the less you're spending on it. Right, the less you're spending disposal. on waste disposal. Once the bag's full, um, it can be dropped off at the recycling center. Um, we, we'll, if it's after hours, there are, are um, there's a dumpster out front for the yellow or the orange bags, and um, there's also bins out front for recycling. So. So whether you're open or not, yeah. we can go yep. take care of that. Any thoughts about a curbside pickup from recycling? In terms of picking up the bags, um, well, I knew you pick up the recycling now. Well, the the city of Rochester does the okay. recycling pickup. Okay, okay. Um, we we over the years we have funded that re that curb or the right. curbside program, um, but with our declining, you know, host fees and our declining revenue, we we just can't keep funding and keep our doors open too. Okay. Um, so we're so you're basically at a point where you've got to come up with another solution or a new plan right right and okay. that's why we implemented this program was to help um, incentivize the recycling so we have more recycling coming in um, hopefully that'll help us um, you know with our revenue interesting okay basic recycling things you got paper plastic uh, steel steel aluminum aluminum glass okay. Glass. Okay. Um, Give us an example of steel. That's something I. Don't um, see. like steel food cans. Okay. Um, any kind of scrap metal that you would not. I mean, you can also take your scrap metal to the scrapyard, and they will pay you. Um, but there's like sometimes there's little pieces that people just don't okay. want to drive over there what about for. The uh, the tops of like a glass container. That's something yep, I've wondered. Those are all steel. That's recyclable. Yep. Okay. Evan, you and Stacey are too young to remember this. Scott and I do, but they used to put <laughs> beer in steel cans. I did not yeah, know that before they switched to aluminum. Yeah. Uh, not that you would see that anymore. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> do you know that uh, the world produces uh, 80 billion aluminum cans a year? I did not know that. That was wow. my prep for the show this morning. Oh. I was hoping, wow, Stacey, it looks like she already knew that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so pay as you throw. This is an operating program, it sounds like, yep. right now. Yep. Now, it's what's up participation? Is it, uh, is it going pretty well so far? Um, yes, it is. Um, I, I think as of yesterday or the day before, we'd sold like 230-some bags. So um, That sounds pretty good. Yeah. Now, what, about, I, what about electronics? Can we recycle electronics through? Yes. As long as you're a Fulton County um, resident, okay, we take um, electronics, okay, um, at no charge. All right, um, and that's another thing we've done so much for this community as over the years as far as what we have, what we take, and what we don't take. Well, I know you've had the tire days and things yep. like that too. And a lot of other solid waste districts charge for these right. items. Um, at this point, we do not. Double A batteries, stuff like that. Yep, any okay. kind of household battery, okay. um, electronics, okay. household hazardous waste. 
the uh, fluorescent mm -hmm. bulbs? Fluorescent lights. Okay. Okay, that's yep. a question I've always had. Yep. Got to be around here. Got some of those. That's great to know. Well, I noticed yesterday the timing on this is pretty good since we have you in here this morning, Stacy. There's an article in the Sentinel about um, the curbside pickup versus pay as you throw. Talk to us a little bit about that, if you would. Okay. Um, well, when we brought this to the city council to maybe implement this program along with the curbside pickup so that um, the, we could, you know, get away from doing the subsidy of this program. And it was, it was an idea for them to maybe implement this so that they could kind of subsidize them, their program themselves, the, the curbside pickup. Okay. okay. Um, just because of the fact that we can't keep um, paying It's a long-term right. planning issue. Um, okay. And we just wanted something to, uh, to get them to maybe help subsidize themselves but um just keep working at it right right more, com more yeah. conversation right coming right okay. well, that's good well it sounds like something i, I know i'm um a, a user of curbside pickup for recycling sure. i've really enjoyed that um so that's something that has value to me and um this pay as you throw seems like a really uh innovative and interesting program uh, maybe a big part of your future. Sounds yep, like. We hope so. Stacy, one last quick question. I, I know in the beginning days of recycling in Fulton County, you had to separate, let's say, your plastic from your paper from your glass and things like that. Right. Do we still have to do that, or can we throw everything in one bin? No, um, it makes it easier if you uh, okay. uh, sort it. Um, that's a big thing with time wise with the city. They really want, you know it to be separated okay. that way they don't have to spend so much time out there on the streets um, sorting it okay good to know okay I've got uh, uh, a couple of stats let's see if you uh, one one little trip quick trivia question too what percentage of total US waste is aluminum cans 1% 7% or 21% okay. I'm gonna say 21, yeah, 21. they were all going 21, 21. One it's no because kidding. so many because are recycled. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's a okay. that's probably the easiest thing to remember to recycle. Right, right. It is. that's so a testament to the uh, American people, right? Yes, right. Absolutely. <laughs> yes, it and is. Like I said, in the world, there's 80 billion cans a year. So, and in aluminum, I, I was looking can be recycled many, many, many times, almost unlimited times, which is also strange to me. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then, on average, it costs thirty dollars a ton to recycle. Fifty dollars to send that to a landfill, or sixty-five to seventy-five to incinerate it. Wow. Well, Stacy, um, thank you so much for sharing uh, some information about the work that Fulton County Solid Waste District is doing for us, um, and in partnership in this community. We appreciate what you've been what you've been doing and the opportunities that you give us, the citizens, to participate in that. Um, and thank you for thinking outside the box and ahead on a pay-as-you-throw type program. Well, th um, thanks for having us. We appreciate it. You're very, very welcome. Uh, we've been speaking with Stacy Hart from the Fulton County Solid Waste District. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave all of you with some excellent words of wisdom this morning. I'm ready. Okay. I'm ready. I'm, in fact, I might, I might just write these now. Okay. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, well, let's record this. Okay, let's do. Okay. Pause. <laughs> Bill Nye, the science guy, said, if you want grown-ups to recycle, just tell their kids the importance of recycling and they'll be all over it. <laughs> That's that well just said. rings true to me. It is true. Yeah, it is very true. <laughs> Emma Gottschalk, thank you very much Thanks, for being Tom. on the First Federal Thanks, Program. Scott. Stacey, thank you. Thank Scott, you. Stacey. as always, Thanks. thank you for being here. Buying your first home? Let the experts at First Federal Savings Bank help you through the process. At First Federal, all of their mortgage loans are serviced locally with payment options that are convenient for you. Their staff will work with you answering your questions and providing professional service. First Federal will even pay standard closing costs for qualifying first-time home buyers. Just another way, First Federal takes care of you, your local mortgage lender.